So I guess the name was close enough. <laughs> Apparently I'm very Danish. <laughs> so how are you guys doing this morning? Great. Great? Fantastic. I'm a little nervous. I left my note out there. Maybe I should have brought it. Don't know. Good. So, on a very random Wednesday in Mexico City, uh, me and Christian, my colleague, we were, um, we were getting a tattoo, and this very friendly Mexican tattoo artist was pressing the needle to my skin and was making very, very sure that I was not going to forget the journey that we were on. And, uh, and Christian and I, we weren't really celebrating anything. Like, we hadn't, we hadn't achieved what you would normally say was success. Actually, we hadn't really achieved anything at that time. On that Wednesday, as far as I remember, things were not going that well. And before I ended up in that Mexican tattoo shop on that Wednesday, for the last 10 years or so, I've been um, trying to push the limits of things. I've tried to move people and companies and organizations forward. I've tried to help people see that the landscapes are shifting and that the world looks different when you look forward. I've tried to push the boundaries of the box and break down the walls and change the game and literally make people see all the amazing things we could do if we tried. And there we go. And for the last year or so, we've been spending our time on Mexican rooftops, bringing clean energy to low-income families. And on those rooftops and over the last years, I was thinking about and contemplating about what was it that made some companies thrive and able to change and building beautiful things and seeing the world brighter and what was it that made some organizations and people and companies consistently get themselves stuck, like unable to move. And we were thinking about on those roofs We were thinking about on those roofs what would be the key factor in the future if we wanted to consistently change the game moving forward. We knew what was happening now and today, but what would be the key factor in the future? And it came down to one idea, and it's an idea I would like to share with you today. And it's relatively simple. It's called 6-3-1. And it's kind of a frame to put in some of the key things I believe is going to be the key driver for what will make us change in the future. Because six of everything we do fail. Six attempts of whatever we try and achieve, like utterly and completely and epically fails. And I know with myself that six out of ten things I do, they, to rephrase the failing, maybe they don't turn out as failures, but they definitely don't land with, within what I thought. Or to say it in another way, they turn out remarkably different than what I aimed for. And we all know this, we hear it all the time, like 99 out of 100 startups fail, and uh, you've seen it in colleagues, you maybe even had a failure yourself, and you know how it feels. And we struggle with this. We struggle to actually find the learnings in these and get back up. But we have to, because we have to get back up and learn from these six experiences. And we have to turn that in to three things that go a little better. And, you know, three things that go a little better, that's pretty much a Tuesday. That is, 
a gray Tuesday vanilla. It's one of those days you, you don't really see it. it. I mean, you're not popping the champagne and nobody's really getting hurt. But in those days and in those moments, we're only there because we learned from the six, we got to the three. And if we're capable of understanding that we're in a three and we have to pick up the learnings, then we'll get to the one. And one thing then might turn out within the area of what you thought you wanted to do. I think we call this the game-changing moment. We call it uh, the Titans and the Olympians, and we call it success. And, and we think that this exists. We think that this is what we aim for. But in a world that is changing so fast, where we think we know the map, and how to get around, we don't know the map anymore. Even people like me, who are on the edge and trying to push things forward and claim to try and change the game somehow, we have no idea. None of us have any idea where this is going to land. So what do we do? Well, we have to evolve somehow. We have to evolve and be able to see the learnings between what we call success and failure. We have to be able to see these micro moments that happens while time passes and see that as value. Because it cannot be about the one thing anymore. It has to be about the many. But how do we do that? Well, then we need the ability to forgive. We need the ability to forgive and to suspend judgment. We need the ability to have the resilience to keep pushing when the six and the threes, when they occur. And they're going to occur more and more and more because the one, it doesn't exist. So that is what companies will do in the future. That is how we change the game in the future. Because what if success is about the ability to apply forgiveness and suspend judgment? What if success in the future is about reflecting and learning and turning. That's what they're going to do in the future. That's how we change the game in the future. That is how we will have enough speed to be able to learn fast enough to move forward. And when we do that, it is not about the one game-changing moment anymore. Because if it is about the ability to learn, it's up to all of us. It's up to all of us to thrive in those moments and forgive for things that don't turn out the way we think and to change the game moving forward. And in that moment, I knew that the tattoo artist was not drilling the company logo into my arm because we were succeeding with anything. I knew that we were celebrating something between the results. I knew that we were celebrating a micro moment between the six and the threes and the ones. Thank you.